Hi, everyone, and welcome to Houston Life. It is Friday, October 16th, and as always, we're so glad to have you with us. I'm Absolutely. Derek Shore. Absolutely. I'm Courtney Zavala. Welcome to Friday. We love that. And we've got a great show. Feels like fall today outside. I'm loving does. this. And coming up on Houston Life, whether you are a first-time homebuyer or looking to put your house on the market, it's probably safe to say you've got a lot of questions. Well, have no fear. Our real estate expert has some answers for you. Plus, the local campaign that wants Texans to really think big when it comes to adopting dogs. All right, and our very own Joe Sam is out live with something perfect for the weekend right now. And uh, I'm a little jealous of this assignment, Courtney. I know. Having fun outside. We'll join a check in with him in just a little bit. Oh, there he is. He's all suited up. He's got his helmet on. It looks like. I don't know, is he going to go down a zip line? Oh. What's about to... There, oh. Yes, he is. This is happening live right now. That is so cool. We, <laughs> we hear you, Joe. <gasps> wow. wow. We're having such a great time on here. Look at the lake. That oh, is lake so is cool. Oh, I love a good zip line. Okay, well, he's got a great assignment up there today, and we will hear from Joe a little later on in today's show. That's great. That is awesome. Of course, that's over at Big Rivers Water Park and Adventures. <laughs> Can't wait to chat with him. Also, it's the play we can keep watching over and over again. Oh, yeah. Carlos Correa's walk-off homer left the race. One and ball, one strike. Ecstatic. In the air, center field. Correa's watching. This is back. Can I just tell you, I had a Zoom call last night and I knew exactly what happened because everybody downstairs in my house went nuts. So, yes, yes, it was amazing. Yeah, Correa is now tied for the most homers by a shortstop in a single postseason. The Strohs took back the game five, back game five. The final was four to three. Absolutely. Walk off in the ninth. Joining us now to break down what this means for the home team, the good guys, our good guy, KPRS T2 sports director, Randy McAvoy. Big Mac. You know what I love is that Carlos called this to the skipper. Wasn't that awesome? Yes. I mean, I mean he's done this before, but, you know, the stories came out after the game really cool. He, he, he told not only Dusty Baker, but he also pulled his buddy Jose Altuve, and he looked down on Jose. Of course, he's like a foot taller than Jose. <laughs> uh, and he told Jose, I'm going to do a little walk-off here. And they both said, go for it, big guy. And he, he delivered. I mean, what a scene. I mean, Carlos has been so clutch in the playoffs mm -hmm. over the last five or six years. Amazing to watch. You have all the confidence that he can make uh, the big swing when necessary, and he delivered in that ninth inning last night. Oh, yeah, and Randy, I mean, we like to be optimistic here at Houston Life, right? We've been supporting our Strohs, of course, because how could you not? I think for a lot of people, though, they just thought maybe all hope was lost last night, saved it at the last moment. Right. What do we need to keep in mind going into the next game? Because the pressure is definitely on. It's definitely on, but you know what, Dirk? I, I think the pressure now that it's 3-2 is more on the raise today because now you, you got in their, into their mind just a little bit by winning two in a row and, and the way you won that game last night. I mean, you saw the stunned look that the Rays had on all their faces in that dugout watching Correa's <laughs> uh, big home run to center field. So I, I think the pressure is on the Rays. Uh, I think the Astros are going to continue to play loose. Uh, they know what's at stake. They've got to still win another game. That's they, Everybody knows that. But this is a baseball team, the Astros, that have been in so many big games dating back last five out of the last six years making playoff runs like they have. That lineup has played a lot of playoff games together. The Rays can't say that. And I think experience mm -hmm. deep into a postseason is always a factor. I think we're seeing that right now. This is a team that was down 0-3, and now they've won two in a row. They're playing relaxed baseball. They're getting key hits, good pitching. They, they just need more of the same uh, today, and it's going to be a good contest. Framber Valdez against Blake Snell, the starter for the race. Absolutely, and what a great story, Randy, because uh, not only last night, but the night before, the national announcers basically uh, pegged the Rays for the World Series and right. said this this series is over and I think it's so fantastic that yet the Astros are fighting hard again. Uh, you know that's you don't say that to the Astros yeah. I mean they got a chip on their shoulder now like hey we, we've been to these World Series and ALCS has give us a little respect hey the odds are stacked against them and we've talked about it over the year I don't know if you guys have but there's been only one team that's come down from uh, 03 in an ALCS it was the 2004 Boston Red Sox that beat the Yankees they won four in a row and got it done 
two nights ago, and they, this came out after the game yesterday, two nights ago, a, a group of Astros, I don't know how many are actually were in that group, but they pulled up the, uh, the documentary on that 04 Red Sox team to watch just the experience that they had to, to rally and, and beat the Yankees in that series. I, I would love to know who was in that group, right. but uh, whoever's in that group uh, got you got a lot of, uh, out of it and, indeed and to uh, watch what the Red Sox did and so they're, they're holding out hope that they can get it done starts today they got to get a win in game six Absolutely. yeah well, I think we can prove those national announcers yes. wrong Randy McAvoy thank you so much we know you're a busy guy and go Strohs you got it great to see you so Courtney did you know today is dictionary day and over the years you know they add words constantly to the dictionary so words like bay and noob <laughs> and bootylicious. Disgusting names have all been <laughs> added to the Oxford Dictionary. So, Courtney, you and I are going to guess uh, what some of the unusual recent additions actually mean. Okay. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work, so producers feel free to jump in and let us know if we're messing it all up. But what's happened is we have a list of cards, and we have not reviewed these words at all, but we're going to read the word, and then you have to guess what the word is. So I'll read a word, you guess, okay. and then I think we'll, we'll reveal the meaning. So the okay. first word is phablet. Fablet? Fablet. I have no idea. What? Fabulous you... tablet? I don't know. Oh, okay, well you're on, on your way. Fablet with a PH, not with an F. Oh, see I didn't know that. It's a smartphone having yeah. a screen which is intermediate in size between that of a typical smartphone and tablet computer. That's what Joe Sam has, I think, because his looks like a desktop. He has very large pockets. I don't know where I don't he know keeps that. It's like he's carrying around a giant Yours lunch are, tray. Okay, you ready for the next one? Sure. Glamour. Glamour? Is that an adjective? A noun? Do you know what it is? Do you want? Yes. Glam. I think it's an adjective, like yeah. a glamour, like I'm a, she's a glamour girl. Will you spell it? Is it G-L-A-M-M-A? Yeah. It's on the screen. <laughs> I can't see that tiny screen. <laughs> I can't either. And the white background totally freaks me out. I can't see a thing. But it, it means a glorious grandmother. What? Especially one oh, who glamour. is... Yeah. Like a grandma. Glamour. Oh, well, glamour and glamour. Got, I got it. Okay. Okay, relatively young or fashion conscious. Yes. Glamma. We're, go we're going to Glamma's house. That's cool. Oh, I love learning new stuff. Okay, the word MacGyver. Like a problem solver? A fix-it person? There you go. Yeah, yeah that's similar. what I call Orlando. <laughs> well, like the TV show back yeah. in the day to construct, fix, or modify something in an improvised or inventive way, typically by making use of whatever items are at hand. Yes, okay, next one. Bum fuzzle. I did not think that's what you were going to say. <laughs> Bum fuzzle. One word. Bum fuzzle. <laughs> I thought that my nightmare <laughs> was actually was about to come through. true. You're saying a bad word on I TV. I know. Um, I don't know, but it also sounds gross. What is it? This is a simple term that refers to being confused, perplexed, or flustered. Or to cause confusion. Well, You're I am indeed by the word. bum fuzzled <laughs> right now. Oh, okay, and here's one that I'm sure you probably know. This is not a new word. Cattywampus. Oh, like crazy. Uh, like, right? Out of sorts? Yeah, out of sorts. Yeah. Something uh, that is in disarray, askew, or yeah. isn't directly across from something else. Cattywampus. So, cattywampus. Great word. Okay, so I, I, boy, they keep giving me the really interesting ones. Tara Diddle. It's like they chose the word specifically for me. That Tara was my Diddle. nickname in high school. <laughs> didn't you date Tara Diddle? Tara Diddle. Yeah, it didn't work out. <laughs> this word refers to someone or something that is filled with pretentious nonsense. You did date that person. I d I've dated a few Tara Diddles. <laughs> and something that is a lie. <laughs> I still don't know how I would use that in a sentence. I don't either. Oh, I'm glad okay. that's not part of this game. Well, that was a good time. There are more, but uh, maybe we'll post those on social a little later. Snollygoster. Bumbershoot. Zoanthropy. Snollygoster. <laughs> that was also my nickname in that. high school. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys. Th today is Friday, as we said. So ahead of the weekend, we've got cooler weather now. You know, Monday, HISD is heading back to the classroom for those who chose to go back in person. It's been a struggle.
It's been a struggle since March, you know, for all yeah. of us homeschooling our kids, and we're just all looking for ways to entertain our children. And, you know, part of virtual learning, you still have ancillary classes, right? So you still have your science and all of art classes and things like that, plus PE. Well, thank goodness. This is where we call in the big guns. Go outside and run around the block. I know, that's what I tell them. Just go outside, go walk the dog, do something. Thank goodness that I have a best friend, Lori. Because best friend Lori is also my CrossFit coach. She's a trainer. Perfect. Well, who better to wrangle a bunch of fourth graders? Aww. There's Grace, Everly, Cash, Oliver, Brady, Ryan, Findlay, AJ, my AJ, and Dawson. Ryan is also Lori's best friend Lori's niece. Um, so she said this was like herding cats for 45 minutes while she put them through a workout. And, um, you know, some did it without their shoes. Others just put their shoes on. Some, you know, they all ran around. I said, well, was it fun? Did you have a good time? She said, well, they all moved. They were all running around. So I said, well, then perfect. That's great. That's Because so many people have been sitting around and, like, so sedentary during this time. Yeah. So that's fantastic. I know. I'd like Lori to push me to run around the house or I, something. Lori, can we get on that? Let's yeah, go. Yeah, we'll figure that out. I know. So thanks to her, and those kids loved it. AJ said it was a great workout. So it was super fun. Well, and also, remember, you are definitely not alone in this. There are so no. many parents and caregivers out there who are in this same boat, and yeah. that actually leads to our viewer question of the day. We want to know how you all are feeling about sending the kids back to school. Are you ready? What are your thoughts, your fears, your hopes, and dreams? Please visit our Houston Life Facebook page and share your comments, and we will try to share some of them right here on the air. Absolutely. And after the break, guys, are you managing your finances correctly? When you get paid, we are sharing money-saving tips to help you stretch that paycheck. And today is feeling a lot like fall, which means it is a great chance to check in with our aunts, Barbara and Betty, because we know they love the cooler weather. Is, are they on? Are we on? Mm. Oh, what's I going think there's on? a mute button somewhere. Not on our end, girl. No way. Mm. Hey, Bobby. We need help with the computer. Isn't he hot? He's probably in there eating a sandwich. He doesn't know what's going on. What show? What show do they host? I don't know. Uh, so I think they're having some technical yeah. problems. We're going to try to sort out those issues, and we'll check back in with them a little later on. Ooh. Houston Life will be back in two minutes. Payday, and maybe you've been thinking about buying a TV or those brand new Justin Bieber Crocs, but our next guest says not so fast. Joining us now with five do's and don'ts to help us get the most out of our paychecks, certified financial planner and president of Shakiba Capital, Trevor Shakiba. Trevor, welcome to the show. And uh, something tells me you have some bad news. You're saying we can't celebrate like it's 1999? <laughs> well, look, hey, payday is a celebration. There's no doubt it should be celebrated, but you know, uh, of course, within reason. And today, I'm sure a lot of the viewers, Friday, payday. And so this is a great segment. And that is my first point, don't go crazy. Basically, just keep things in line with what you need to do. And, and kind of what I mean here, all jokes aside, is just because it's payday, don't announce like, hey, drinks on me, everybody. Let's go to the restaurant. Um, so just you need to have that plan and and the other thing here is and i see this a lot you'd be surprised if you have already spent money and you're waiting for this payday to catch up on groceries we, we have a big problem you need to know you've got a budget you need to know how much you get paid when you get paid and really start to handle this in a really effective way Okay, so that's a that's a very solid don't. Let's move on to one of the do's. And you say, do get the money out of out of your site, out of your primary account. Yeah, and look, I used to to harp on this all the time. Uh, the, the point that everyone needed to be a master with their finances and budget and have spreadsheets. And really, what I came to, Derek, is that the truth is, is that a lot of people are just not good with money, and that's probably going to be a big problem for them. They, they are apt to spend money if they have it. And so the way that you combat that is, is you've got to get it away from you. Um, so how do you budget? Well, know what you need for the, those key expenses, and you know that you need to save and have a certain amount go to reserves and these certain bills. Get that money away from you so it's there, right? Um, and then so 
I, I don't know what else to say there, but um, if you can get it away from you, it's going to help significantly as, as opposed to trying to make yourself this fantastic master financial planner. All right, out of sight, out of mind. Let's hustle through these next few points. Another don't is don't be spontaneous. Impulse buying, essentially. Yeah, look, this is a big one. Um, this isn't the time to decide to, to walk the mall or, or today in 2020, you're probably not walking them all randomly, but getting on and looking at Pinterest and all these different things, you know, don't just go out and decide to buy a puppy. Bottom line, we'll keep this one short, have a plan. Don't just immediately think about, hey, what am I going to do? What am I going to buy? You can get into a lot of trouble that way. Okay, a couple more points here to get to in the last minute. Do pay yourself first. So treat your savings or your retirement account like you're paying a bill. Exactly. And a lot of people do this. This is how you create wealth over a significant period of time. And what I mean by, by this is, is make sure that you're saving to your 401k, your Roth IRA, 529 for the kids. Start off at any amount. If you're not doing anything, start with 1% to your 401k and then, and then just build from there. Little by little. And the last point, don't use credit when you could use cash. A lot of people fall into this trap. Yeah, this is a big one. And I'll just quote this study that I saw that if you charge, you are apt, you are likely to spend 10 to 20% more than if you were to pay cash. And if you really run through that calculation, Derek, with interest and fees, it could be as much as 50%. I always tell people try to feel the pain, whether that's a debit card or actually writing a check, you're going to spend a whole lot less because you feel it as opposed to doing a credit card and seeing it a month later. So true when you're watching it coming out of that account. Trevor Shakiba, thanks so much and happy Friday. Sound advice. Yeah, all the best. And to our viewers, if you are looking for a new way to invest and grow your money, you can connect with Trevor by visiting ShakibaCapital.com. Now let's send it on over to Courtney. All right, Derek, thanks. You know, Big Rivers Water Park and Adventures has reopened, and they're hoping to bring back some summer fun after everyone's plans, of course, had to be canceled. And that's where we find Joe Sam. He's out there checking out some of the attractions that you can expect this season. Uh-oh, somebody's having a good time. We saw you on the zip line. Yeah, Courtney, it was amazing going down those zip lines. We saw the lake. We saw all of those beautiful trees. It really made you feel like you were in the middle of a summer vacation. And that's what we're going to continue doing, having an adventure here at Big Rivers Water Park and Adventures. I have my two gator bars with me, Mr. Bryce, Mr. Mike, and they're bringing in the gators. So the only thing that's missing is my gator. So we're going to go ahead and bring them on in. Bring them on in. There we go. Oh, he's a little active. There we go. And he just finished having a little bathroom break <laughs> as well. I still feel some of those liquids on my hand right now. But we're going to get right into this. General Manager, Mr. Mike, talk about the adventures that we can see here. We already are holding the gators here, and we make sure that we focus on safety while we're doing so. Exactly. As you can see, we have, have their mouths taped up, so we, we don't really have to worry too, too much with them. But here at the water park, we have so many adventures that, that you can have without... Uh, really leaving the Houston area. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have the zip lines, we have uh, the vultures dive, we have obstacle courses, we have water slides, we have wave pool. Oh yeah, look at those water slides too. They're beautiful and that's really giving people what they need, jumping back into the summer, knowing that the coronavirus has canceled so many of the plans. The only thing they're not gonna find in the middle of the pool are these gators here. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And But they can come and check out these gators too and pet, right? Right, we're currently open weekends uh, from 11 to five through the end of November with our Autumn Adventures program, uh, where we have our gator shows, we have a petting zoo, we have a sand hill, we have a uh, uh -huh. hay barn, we have just so much so much fun, it's only $10. And we'll be checking out that too. And right now we're gonna go ahead and get ready for some more adventures here at Big Rivers Adventures. We're gonna get ready to do that and we're gonna be tossing things over and checking in with Pete, Christine, and Eric on what's coming up at four. Later, gator. Welcome back. You know, it was pretty great to wake up this morning. Oh, of course, yeah. the cold front. Did you grab your Uggs? I don't have Uggs. <laughs> But it does start, it, it feels like fall Absolutely. a little bit, I would say. So naturally, the colder weather makes us think of our aunts, Barbara and Betty. So we wanted to have them join us today on Houston Life. I know earlier they were having some technical problems. Oh, but it looks like they're oh, back now. Oh, they're back. Hi, Derek. Hi, Courtney. Two of our favorites. It's your Aunt Barbara and Aunt Betty. And we've got a coffee. We're so excited to be here because Cheers. we woke up 
up to a cold front, and you know what that means. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Oh, and we have these delicious fig mutants. Do you want to take a bite? I'll take a little bite. It goes great with the coffee. Oh, I love a good coffee when it's sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. So we don't know what big plans you. Oh no, I dropped. The oh, fig. that's okay. There's a there's a cleaning crew, I think. Yeah, it's called me. Mm. Tell your son he doesn't do anything anyway. Derek and Courtney, we love you so much. And when you head out this weekend, don't forget, take your sweater. Because it's sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Cheers. Cheers. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Oh, we don't get enough time with these two. We don't. I miss those ladies. Too bad during COVID we've had to be so socially distant. distant. But I'm glad they can, you know, quarantine with each other and They're still having be so close. So much fun. <laughs> Let's check in with uh, get the headlines with Keith, Christine, and Eric. I think Barbara and Betty need to get out a little bit more. Well, they, <laughs> here's the thing, though. They sound like they're from New Jersey. So why would they not be okay with the cold? I don't know. They love the cold. They love the cold. Okay. Yeah. They love it. Okay. They love their sweaters. They, they certainly do. Yes. And the sweater weather that comes with it. We love it very much. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. So, we're talking about this cold front, right? Yes. We brought some rain. Eric, people have been waiting for this, but also it's going to shape up to be a pretty nice weekend, it sounds like. Yeah. I think the rain's going to get out of here. So, we just need Barbara and Betty to come here. I can take the rest of the day off. <laughs> I'm right? done. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Get the weekend started early. Uh, they're fantastic. And now, Derek, Courtney, I know where you guys get your good looks uh, from what side of the family, anyway. All right. So, yes, it is. It's chilly. It is definitely sweater weather today. Sweater weather today. Nasty conditions down in Galveston right now. Cloudy skies, a little bit of rain, 62 degrees. We're drier here in town, but it is still cool. 62 degrees up the Southwest Freeway. You can see some clearing skies in our northern zone, so they're starting to see a little bit of sunshine, but we're socked in with clouds here in Houston. We'll see some clearing for the rest of the afternoon, but I think along the coast, you guys are going to be cloudy all day today. Temperatures with a little sunshine uh, rebounding back into the 70s, but in town, upper 50s, low 60s. Get this. The actual temperature is down 20 to 30 degrees in many places from this time yesterday. So that is a definite cold front. We've got the north wind. It's going to stay cool. Sweater weather continues this evening. We've got uh, a little bit of rain left over along the coast, so maybe an umbrella or two then, but rain will be tapering off this afternoon. We're going to take a look at that nice weekend forecast. Christine, we're getting a little warmer. I think a lot of people will enjoy that. I think Barbara and Betty would love that forecast. Yes. Approved. All right, Eric, thank you. Also coming up at 4 o'clock, a certain vitamin that you may take every day may help you fight against coronavirus. Our health reporter Haley Hernandez has all the details on this. And a big issue with the popular exercise bike that can cost thousands of dollars. Details on an important recall. Yeah, and then Christmas is only 70 days away. Who's is that counting? All? I know who's counting, right? We're going to take a look at some of the most popular holiday sales on Amazon. So all of that coming up at 4 o'clock today, you guys. You might have some sweaters uh, to take a look at as well. Absolutely. Right. Cheers to that. Cheers to the weekend and cheers to all together everybody. Sweater weather. weather. <laughs> Way to go. All right, we'll see you at four. Coming up next, looking to buy or sell a home, the top five things you need to know before you pack those boxes. And coming up later on Houston Life, if you're thinking about adding a four-legged friend to your family, we've got a perfect event for you. Don't go anywhere. Houston Life is back in just two minutes. Thanks for staying with us today on Houston Life. I'm Derek Shore along with the lovely Courtney Savala. Fun hanging out with you, Courtney. Well, thank you. You know what? Let's check in now on our viewers. You guys are answering the question of our day, and this is with HISD starting back person to person on Monday. If you chose that, we want to know from you parents how you're feeling about this. And here is what some of you had to say. Marcy says, my senior went back as soon as the school <laughs> opened the doors. No problem so far. Well, I think a lot of young people are anxious to get back as well. Absolutely, especially a senior, right? And Bonnie writes in, don't forget about those of us married to the teachers. Oh. My husband has been back at school since the day after Labor Day, and it's glorious. Wow, you know what? I have a lot of teacher <laughs> friends in my life, and they've had a, a really busy, busy time with all this. And Irma writes in, only when they control the virus. Yeah. Yes, and Irma, your opinion is shared by many as well. A lot of people are not ready to get face-to-face uh, -face 
just yet. Absolutely. And again, you know, HISD is the largest school district, of course, in, in our area. A lot of other school districts and schools have been back face to face for quite some time. But this is uh, the end of the first six weeks. So that's why if you chose to go back in person, that will start on Monday. Um, and hopefully everything goes well, you know, keeping our fingers crossed, trying to get those kids back to some kind of normalcy. And uh, as the kids head back to school on Monday, but tomorrow night at 630 on the weekend, Houston Life, we are airing a fall real estate special to take you inside of some of the fanciest homes in the city, including one home that's 26,000 square feet with three kitchens and two elevators. You could literally live there and never see anybody in your family. I mean, how can you live with only three kitchens? I don't know. That sounds horrible. Slumming. Kidding. Buying your first home is one of the biggest financial investments you will ever make, of course. And while budgets can vary, Houston offers some of the most luxurious homes to choose from, including properties that reach nearly 30 million dollars. Well, here to give us a sneak peek into that show, plus a few tips on how to get ready to sell or even buy a home is Mark Mendez, president of at Brokerage for Douglas Elliman, Texas. Great to see you, Mark. Thanks for joining us and welcome to Houston Life. Thanks for having me, guys. Good to see you. This is a really exciting time and I love, I, I think everybody loves to see the big homes and l get a look inside of those, the sort of, um, you know, the obtainable ones, but those are, we can get some really great ideas from these types of homes. Yes, correct. Um, I think what you're seeing is a lot of the architects and a lot of designers take advantage of all that space and they're really able to play with and incorporate a lot of new ideas and uh, we've seen some pretty cool floor plans and designs come out of that. And Mark, I feel like buying a home is one of those things that until you actually buy a home, it's sort of a mystifying process, right? But then once you do it, you realize, okay, I can do this. You recommend that before someone sets out to buy a home, they assemble their team, a solid, strong team. Describe to us what that team should consist of. Sure. So. You want a team of professionals behind you. And I think the first and most important is your real estate agent. You want somebody with a lot of experience and somebody that you trust to be an advisor and sort of coach you through the process. Um, next is you want your mortgage broker with you because they're going to really identify what your buying power is and how to apply that to the purchase. It's also gonna be part of your negotiation. Uh, and then finally, is your accountant or your financial planner? And they're really important because they're going to be able to forecast what your cost or what your expenditure is every month and how much it's going to cost you at the end of the life cycle uh, to purchase the property. So those three people really make up the, uh, the core group, and I think that's really important. And then the next step when you're looking to buy a home, once you have that group alongside of you, of course, you want to identify your location, look at the zip code where you want to be. But I think during this time, during COVID, and we're, we're working from home, floor plan, really understanding what you want in a new home. Correct. Floor plan becomes very important because as you start to understand what your lifestyle is going to be like, what room are you going to really spend most of your time in? And, you know, if you're having family gatherings or entertaining, the floor plan is really going to be essential in dictating how you live in that space. So really paying attention to how the room flow works, um, the dimensions of the room and how the house is laid out becomes very important. So it seems like the magical word, uh, Mr. Mark Menendez, is location. We've heard this <laughs> from a, a long time ago, location, location, location. And this is important to determine not just the value, but also the viability and give you the chance to sort of compare and contrast with other homes that are on the market. Yes, so location, 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 right? You hear that all the time in real estate, as you said. but. I think location is probably one of the most important things because it's something that you can't really negotiate or move. So when you pick a place and you decide that that's where you're going to live, it has to be really it has to fit with what you're really looking for because it's something that you can't change later on. Um, and I think that's one of the most important things. Then looking at the data, you know, something we talk about a lot is data research and information, understanding the numbers and the dynamics of a neighborhood that you're looking at which comes into comparables. So uh, recently sold, which is something that a uh, appraiser would look at. Um, real estate agents also use that as a, as a key tool. 
uh, active listings, which really represents the competition in the marketplace. So if you're looking at one specific place, how does it compare to other available properties in the neighborhood? We'll give you a sense of value of how you're looking at the property in question. I think those are pretty much the most important things. Absolutely, and those were points for buying a home. What if you're in the market and you're looking to sell your home? What are some of the, the bullet points we should look at? Yeah, so again, first most important thing is hire a really good real estate agent. They should be experienced and they should have a lot of knowledge of the areas that you're looking in. And then of course, after a certain amount of time with you, they'll understand uh, what kind of characteristics and things that are really important to the individual. Um, again, re re uh, reviewing market data, going into the comparables, the activity, uh, active market um, listings, and then of course, appreciation rates, also all very important. Um, curb appeal, when you're looking at a property, what does it look like to you? How does it appeal to you? Does it look polished? Does it look finished? Um, is, has it been taken care of? The maintenance of a property really is important to observe um, for the buyer. So as a seller, you wanna make sure that your house is really in its best and, and, and highest uh, condition. You know, I, used, I like to say El Decor Magazine status, you know, so it's really looking its best. And then um, size, uh, sorry, uh, staging. Staging is also something that's become very important in selling a house. Um, if it's empty, making sure that you have furniture so that when a buyer walks into the home, they can see the scale of a room and they can start to imagine what their furniture is gonna look like and start to identify with the property is very important. Uh, but if you have somebody that's actually living in the house, then it's always a good idea to um, declutter and depersonalize the house. When a buyer walks into your home that's for sale, you want them to have the experience of imagining themselves in the space. And if they're looking around and it's cluttered with your own personal stuff and a lot of your pictures, it's hard for them to have that experience. So that's essential as well. Um, and then when you're selling, again, you know, a lot of people don't think about this, but trying to identify what your next move is gonna be. So if somebody comes into the house today and says that they really want it, uh, you should be prepared knowing what your next move is gonna be because obviously you wanna know where you're going, but it also allows for you to be much more flexible in the negotiations. So that's, uh, that's really important. I would say those are the five that I would look at. Okay, it's great advice. We're gonna go home and hide those pictures of aunts Barbara and Betty. <laughs> we like them, but a potential buyer might not. Mark Menendez <laughs> with Douglas Elliman, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. And a reminder that the Houston Life Fall Real Estate Show will air tomorrow at 6.30. Very nice. And still ahead, these big dogs have even bigger dreams of finding a forever home. We'll have the 411 on what we all can do to help out. And we are checking back in with Joe Sam, who has the perfect destination for the whole family to enjoy this weekend. Looks like he's getting fitted. We're going to hit the zip lines once again. We're going to check back in with him in a little bit. And we love watching Houston Life, don't we? Don't we? Hey, I'm Chris, and this is Otto, and he's leaving. Foxy, don't we like watching Houston Life? That's the best. The best. Thank you all so much. What a nice little treat these surprises always are. Well, it may feel like fall has kicked off today, but there is one place that is helping continue the summer fun. That is right. We're talking in New Caney. Let's check back in with our own Joe Sam, who is live at Big Rivers today. Oh, my word. What are you doing? So this is going to be even more thrilling than what we did with the zip lining and the gators. Courtney, Derek, we're getting ready to do the vultures dive and we're we're so excited about this because this is going to be really fun i have my man with me again mr mike to explain to us how tall is this here how high up are we we are seven stories up above the ground level so you're gonna basically free fall and this will catch you and lower you down. Wow, and we already got all of our safety precautions geared up and ready to go. As you saw a little bit earlier, I was putting all of it on because we don't want any accidents to happen, not dropping this far down to the ground. Again, we can see the entire park up here, Mr. Mike. I mean, this is incredible having people come out here and experience this. Tell us the whole gif of you creating this here and having people come and get that experience when they come to Big Rivers Water Park and Adventures. Again, we wanted to give, give, the, give our audience something that they've never experienced before. 
So at no other water park can you do all these activities. So we wanted to make sure that you have the experience of a lifetime when you come out here. And we're about to get the experience of a lifetime. Okay, so how long does this take? How, how fast of a, of a dive this is? Because I don't know if I'm ready for it. <laughs> Uh, this will be something you're going to remember for a long time. Oh, <laughs> okay. I have to brace myself. I'm trying to talk more because I'm trying to talk myself out of it. So simply tell us what do we have to do for the vultures dive. You just got to have the guts to step off. Uh, oh, head my first? goodness. Are you going head I'm or feet? I'm not sure if you can do it. We're not going to go head first. No way. We're going to go feet first. I don't think have I can go head first. Have you ever done this before, right. Joe? I've never done this before. This is something that is going to be my first time ever doing. So it's going to be an experience for me, and I think that's what a lot of people want to come out here and do for themselves, get their first time experience doing something new and doing something exciting and thrilling. So I'm, I'm very freaked out right now, Courtney and Derek, <laughs> but we're going to try and, and, and make this happen for you guys. All right, All we're right, ready. Are we ready? Yeah. Good Ooh. luck, Joe. Okay, so hold on here. <laughs> nice knowing you. Oh, no! <laughs> you can do it. Okay. Oh my goodness, I'm like tiptoeing to the edge. Okay. All right, here we go. All right. Should I should I scoop down some? Just push him. All right, in three, no. two, one, no pushing. All no. right, three, two, one, I'm gonna close my eyes. You can do it, you can do it. Oh, oh. oh. oh we made it! We made it! Oh I'm not sure if you guys can see me. But we made it all the way down. Oh, oh, okay. Are you okay there? The He's kissing the ground. Oh. Okay. <laughs> there you go. That was such oh, an experience. You look good, though. A lot of people are going to have an experience getting down here. Courtney, Derek, you have to come out here and try this for yourselves. I did it. Great job. Right. There we go. Face your fears, Joe. <laughs> Nicely job. done. Did it, did it oh. feel like your stomach was dropping out? What did the fall feel like? Because I know from our perspective, watching from the top, it probably felt a lot faster than it looked, right? Did you it feel was, like you were going to hit the ground? It was really, really fast. It felt like I was going to hit the ground. It went really fast. I had to close my eyes throughout the entire thing, so I felt the wind in my non-existent hair. And I'm telling you, it's something you have to come out here and check out for yourselves. They're going to be open every weekend up until Thanksgiving from 11 to 5, and you have to try the Vultures Dive. You cannot leave this place without trying to get out for yourselves. Okay. Oh, my goodness, that was something. Keep Woo! your feet on oh the ground, Joe. Word. Great job. <laughs> so much fun. Woo! All right, enjoy the rest of your Woo! afternoon out there. I'm sure he'll find plenty more adventure out <laughs> I there. Know. All right, still ahead on Houston Life, the campaign that wants Texans to think big when it comes to adopting dogs. Houston Life will be right back. Well, Halloween is right around the corner and get the pets involved with this fun and free event happening at Levy Park tomorrow. It's their annual howl o -ween dog contest, costume contest. To participate, just show up in full costume with your pet for a socially distant photo session between 2 and 4 p.m. Voting will take place online through Levy Park's Facebook page and categories include best ensemble, most creative, and of course, scariest. All winners will receive a, a prize pick a prize pack and the people's choice will get a year's supply of dr pepper and we're going to announce the winners right here on houston life live on thursday october 29th oh very much looking forward to that we do have a special show planned for that day folks so they say everything is bigger in texas right courtney absolutely well, dogs are no exception and sadly larger pups spend more time in shelters and are being killed every single year simply because they cannot find a home best friends and animal society senior your program manager Carrie McNeil is here to share what their organization and what you can do to help as well. Carrie, hi, welcome to the show. Hi. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me. And you're exactly right. You know, a disproportionate number of big dogs are among the thousands of healthy adoptable dogs that are killed in our animal shelters in the greater Houston area each year simply because they don't have an, a home. So that's why Best Friends Animal Society has teamed up with local Houston municipal animal shelters to launch the Texas Big Dog Campaign to coincide with National Adopt a Shelter Dog Month this October. And we're really um, just trying to encourage the Houston community to step up and to specifically adopt or foster dogs 40 pounds and over. 
And we're looking at uh, Lisa Hernandez. This is our KPRC Channel 2 morning anchor, of course. This kicked off an event on October 1st with a virtual adoption event. Yeah, so cool. And when we talk about these large dogs, Carrie, we're talking 40 pounds or more, correct? Correct. And 40 pounds isn't, you know, that huge, but for a lot of people, um, you know, it's it's a little intimidating and it's it's really um, interesting to think about that over 40,000 animals enter our city and county shelter each year, just often due to circumstance. That's really enough to fill Minute Maid Park and many wow. of these dogs are big dogs. So big dogs over 40 pounds tend to have a longer length of stay at shelters. They're more often get overlooked by adopters and they're more challenging for us to place in foster homes because people think that they need to have a big yard or a big space for a big dog and that's just simply not the case. Also, it just seems heartbreaking, Carrie, that there are these misconceptions that big dogs are more dangerous, right? That they're, mm -hmm. you know, if you have a family, you can't have a big dog. There are gentle, sweet, big dogs out there. And as you pointed out, they're going to spend a longer time in the shelter. And the shelter is not a fun place to be. They're more likely right. to be euthanized. And, and the sad truth is these would make great, great additions to so many families out there. Yeah, and you know, when you go into a shelter, you really, and you're looking at a dog behind the kennel bars, I mean, I really encourage people to get them out into the play yards or take them home and foster them because oftentimes the personality you see in the shelter is not the personality you're going to see when you get them home or even foster them. So, you know, I'm, I'm a mom, I have uh, three kids under 10, um, so I, and we foster big dogs. And it's quite interesting because most of the big dogs we bring into our home are actually much more more gentler, much more quiet than the small <laughs> dogs that we have in our home. So isn't that the truth? Yeah. I agree with that wholeheartedly. <laughs> okay, let's entice some people if they're ready to bring a puppy home and, and a dog. We want to meet some of these four-legged friends. And the first one up is a three-year-old, and her name's Delilah. I mean, I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> she is the cutest thing I've ever smile. seen. <laughs> <laughs> so Delilah yes. is a three-year-old boxer terrier mix, right? And I, I understand that she's kind of unaware of her non-lap dog status. She likes to wear oh costumes my gosh. around. Yes, she thinks she is a small dog. She just loves to get up in her foster mom's lap and cuddle. She loves to seek out affection and snuggles. She's very fun loving and silly and she actually loves to dress up. You can see that in the video. She rocks the catwalk quite well. Yeah, the dog walk, <laughs> the Courtney. Dog walk. The dog walk. I love that skirt. All right, let's move on to Jackson. Jackson is a two-year-old lab retriever mix stray found in Houston. Yes. Um, yeah, Jackson originally came from Bark, the city shelter. And as you can see in these pictures, he's very regal and a loyal dog. He's a great companion. Um, he enjoys taking walks and going on adventures. Um, I think in that photo, he's actually watching uh, TV with his foster. Cute. Uh, he just loves basking in the affection and attention from his fosters. Oh, my word. So cute. <laughs> Look at those ears. I know. And that tongue. Just adorable. Okay, we have another one to feature. Javier, and it's a two-year-old American Staffordshire who was also found in Harris County as a stray. Yes, um, and if you're looking for a wingman, this might be your pup. He loves to run errands with his foster mom, and he enjoys most going to get puppuccinos. Um, and he's just very chill. He just loves to hang out next to the foster on the couch. He's very affectionate. So if you're looking for a wingman, this might be your pup. <laughs> and Carrie, before we let you go, uh, about 30 seconds left, what are some of the ways that we can all get involved? Because now as more and more people are spending time at home, it does seem like a great time to either foster or adopt. Absolutely. So adopt, you know, adopt is a great way to get involved. Adopters will receive actually a free mask and a matching bandana for their new King and Nine companion and will be invited to a drive through tailgate event November 1st to receive free supplies and giveaways. And we have a bunch of participating shelters throughout the greater Houston area. So please, they're up on the screen now. Visit all of them, check them out. They all have big dogs that are over 40 pounds that are looking for a home. And if you can't adopt, now more than ever is a really great time to foster a big dog. With COVID-19, many people are home feeling isolated, disconnected. Fostering a pet is completely free and the joy and companionship they bring is the reward. We help our fosters by giving supplies. Um, so if you're interested in that, be sure to check us out at bestfriends.org Houston 
or follow us on Facebook or Instagram. All right, Carrie McKeel, we got to leave it there. Thanks so much for your hard work. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie. You can head to our website for details on how you can help the T Texas Big Dog Campaign. And Houston Life will be right back as we go to break. There's a look over Medical Center. Beautiful day, a little cloudy, but it feels so good outside. Sweat away. A reminder here, don't forget to tune in tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m., right here on Channel 2 for the Houston Life Ball Real Estate Special that we're going to take you on a tour of some of the most amazing homes in Houston. Yeah, I mean, we can dream, right? Keith Ugh. and Christine, you got to tune in because, uh, you know, even if you don't have a spare $4.8 million, it's nice to see how some people are able to how live. How some people live. I'm still dreaming about that closet. It was fantastic. I'm you dreaming about loving? sweater weather. I was just going to say, the cooler temp. I'm sweater weather. Yeah, you know, and all else fails, we can pool our resources and come up with like maybe a down payment. I would walk through and be like, oh, I like that vase. <laughs> I yes. wonder I could, well, I can copy it I from Hobby Lobby. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I Target. can make one. I can make one at home. <laughs> Paper mache. Perfect. Seriously, it gives you, it gives you ideas. Yes. It's a wish list for sure. Hope, yes. Yeah, great that, to see you guys. Have a great weekend. You see too. You.